Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to another pattern drafting demo. It's been a little while since I did one of these, but I was going through my comments and I had a request for a specific style, this simplicity pattern here that this image floats around on Pinterest and over on the vintage pattern like wiki sites, but I've never actually seen the pattern itself. So the back of the envelope would be quite illustrative here for how this thing goes together. But I knew that I could draft this pattern by looking at it. Um, I kind of have after all the years of pattern drafting at this point and reading a lot of pattern drafting books from both now and the past, I do kind of have x-ray vision for designs now where I look at them and I can kind of tell where they put the darts and whether the fullness created is using the darts or not, which this is a bit of a tricky pattern for that today. Um, so I figured I would share with you how this design is drafted. I had one request for this and this video is all for you. Let's go ahead and jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. All right, here we are with my bodice blocks, of course. And I'm going to be making this design here. I've lightened the image so you can kind of see the style lines a little bit better because it's hard to tell that this princess seam here on this dress, which goes all the way down through the skirt, of course, there's no waist seam here, but the princess seam itself does not go through the apex on this. So the dark fullness is actually in this gathering and not moved into this uh, princess seam. So this princess seam is just a style line through the bodice of this and is not actually a fitting seam up here, it looks to me, because there's this gathering here uh, below the bust and into the shoulder, and that is actually where the dark fullness is hiding. So I'll show you how I think this goes together. Of course, again, I don't have the actual vintage pattern uh, images of anything other than this one image to reference. So this is my, you know, crack at this, just looking at this image alone, seeing what they've done. But that was the first kind of clue here that something was a little bit off about this in that the princess seam did not go through the apex. I'll just take a tracing of my basic blocks here. I'll put the back aside for now. Of course, I have no idea what the back of this looks like, but that's besides the point. I'll go ahead and cut this buddy out and you'll see that the tracing uh, will change. The pen colors of the pen line will change in a moment here <laughs> when I switch to a different tracing of this because this first one got a little bit messy and I realized I could explain things a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my neckline in here. I think I could have exaggerated the curves of this a little bit more to match the illustration a little bit better, but in general, that's the kind of swoopy neckline we have going on. Now I'm going to cut up my waist dart to the apex and down through my side dart to the apex as well. Cause I'm gonna move both of these darts, all the dart fullness up here into the shoulder for now. Of course, this does have a little bit of shoulder gathering, so we'll leave some of this fullness up there. But for now, I just wanna get it out of my way while we do all of the other work on the bodice here. So moving all that dart fullness for my personal block, which is this much, I know it's kind of a lot. Um, that's again, a larger bust size to waist size ratio. Um, so a differential between those two things is going to create a large amount of dart fullness like this. But again, we have this princess seam that's an armhole princess that is not coming through the apex. So I'm just gonna draw that princess seam on, make that end where the dart used to be pretty much. And then I'll draw in this little cornered or like mitered section here along the center front as well. So I'm gonna have my three main pieces for this bodice. And again, again, this um, bodice connects to the skirt pieces. So I'll show you how that is done later as well. Um, but for now, we're just gonna work on the bodice alone. But I'll cut off this side front. And of course, because I'm cutting this away and we're going to want to sew it back together, I'm going to need, need to add seam allowance along both of those. Same with this yoke piece down here. I will need to add seam allowance to that. So let me go ahead and add seam allowance to all these cuts we just made into the pattern. Also important to remember when you watch me draft that my block patterns that I trace to start with do have seam allowance included at the waist and the side seams. Um, like on the outsides of everything. So I only ever have to add seam allowance in to the interior bits like this where I've cut the pattern apart. And in order to put it back together, I, need have to, I have to add seam allowance, but everything else has seam allowance included. And that will become a factor later on in this drafting process as well, because I have to remember that at my waistline of both the bodice and the skirt pieces, I already have seam allowance included. But I'll just add that half inch on with some scrap paper to all of my edges I just cut apart here. We have this giant dart up here still. And again, I still need some fullness up here, but the rest of this is in gathering here below the bust. So I'll go ahead and open up two darts to encompass some of that fullness down here, close some of it from up here in the shoulder. So I don't want quite that much fullness up here in the shoulder. You can, of course, leave it all up in the shoulder if you wanted to not have gathering at the bust or move it all down here to the bust if you wanted to have it all down here at the bust. Um, I moved dart fullness around quite a lot in various designs here on the channel, but in general. Um, and you can watch my darts video for a better explanation of how dart fullness can be manipulated around the front apex. But I will just fill in these areas with some scrap paper again, and then cut these down to size because I've already added seam allowance down here. And because it is already included inherently in my shoulder up there, I don't need to add any seam allowance here. I'm just gonna round this off because it's going to be gathered as opposed to tucked or pleated. If you wanted to tuck or pleat these sections, go ahead and tuck or pleat the paper 
when you cut that edge off. Um, you might have seen me do that before, and that'll give you the correct shape that you will need. All right, so I have my three pieces for the front here. This will gather down into here, like so. This will gather a little bit more at the shoulder, and that will create the cone of the bust. Or a very soft cone today, but what we need, the shape we need. And this is Simplicity 1832. Just label this a little bit before I start working on the back. And once again, there is no uh, depiction of the back of this pattern, at least not that I could find. I didn't dig too, too deeply because I wanted to have time to do this demonstration instead. Um, but I couldn't find an image of the back, so I just assumed they just princessed it to match the front a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to cut my dart away here. I don't need it any longer. But that dart just disappears into the princess seam of the back. Again, if you want a more detailed uh, video about princess seams, I do have a video about that now as well. So I can put a card up to that too. But once again, this counts making the back princess seamed here counts as having cut the pattern apart. So I need to add seam allowance back so that I can sew it back together. And this is going to allow me to have the same princess seams down the back of the dress that are going to be all down the front. And again, we're about to eliminate that waist seam in between the bodice and skirt here. So let me grab my A-line skirt pieces. Again, you can see me draft the A-line skirt from the basic skirt blocks here on the channel in this video. I'll put a card up to that as well. And that means I'm out of cards, but I'm just going to trace the first like nine inches of my skirt pattern. Of course, for this dress, you would want to trace the full length of the skirt for this. Um, you're going to have large pieces for the skirt on this because they have a little bit of bodice involved as well. But I'll take this back here and mark where that piece ends because I'm going to split the skirt in two and able to uh, tape on those pieces to the bodice pieces and like make the bodice pieces extended by using the skirt pieces themselves. And again, I'm just making this about nine inches long because I'm going to be making a mock up today. But if you were to make this dress, you would want to use the full length of the skirt, not just nine inches like I'm doing here. I am also making this with a center back opening because if I were to make this dress myself, I would use a center back zipper. Uh, the original probably has a side zipper because most 1940s dresses do. But I will cut this skirt piece apart where uh, it needs to be cut apart, I suppose, to match up with the tops. And then I'm going to draw the seam allowance on to my pattern pieces. So again, my bodice block and my skirt block already have seam allowance in them. So I just drew it on so I could see that. Um, and then the split where I had cut the skirt apart, I did go ahead and add seam allowance there. So that will match up quite well with these top pieces. I'm just going to layer that line, like what would be the stitching line for the waist seam. I'm going to layer those lines on top of each other and tape these closed. There will be a tiny bit extra in the side pieces doing it this way but I don't mind that tiny bit of crescent at the waist. It doesn't make a huge difference. Um, not like a full, the full like crescent of the waist from the skirt waist and the bodice going together without having a princess seam is much harsher, but this is uh, not too, too bad of a problem. But I'll show you the full process here for the front. Again, I'm just tracing the top nine inches or so of this, 10 inches of my skirt. Again, use a full length skirt if you want a full length skirt. And then I draw on my seam allowance that is already inherent in this pattern. Layer that line over the other and tape that closed. This is quite a harsh meeting point here, so I will add a little bit of paper to smooth that out as well. But I'll just do the same for this side front here. And again, the side fronts are a little bit curvier. Um, so I'm lining up the edges on the right and left hand side of the seam basically, and the middle won't line up perfectly, but there's just be a little bit of extra crescent of fullness in there. And even this is adding a tiny bit of fullness just to even smooth this off. You're adding about an eighth of an inch in here at least, um, and that you know will go to each side. Um, so overall, it's probably adding in about a half inch at the waist, but that's why I like having a waist seam on my garments because I can get nice and cinched, but not everyone wants that, I understand. So here I've cut everything out of muslin, and I do apologize if you hear stomping around in this house. People are deciding to water the garden and walk around above me while I try and record. <sighs> I do what I can, you know, but when you live with other people, meh. But I sewed that center front seam together of the top of the bodice, and then I put the gathering stitching in for the bust and for the shoulders. So you can see those two lines of parallel gathering stitching. This is just um, the largest stitch length on my machine, two lines of parallel stitches so that I can gather this down to fit the piece below. And this of course is a, uh, you know, the lower waist piece is cut or skirt piece, I suppose. The waist yoke and skirt front is cut on the fold. So there's no seam line there and there is a seam on this. So I'm just making sure that the tippy point of this piece matches up with the seam line of the center front of the top of the bodice. So I'm just matching that up, spacing out those gathers so that they're nice and like evenly dispersed. And I'm going to pin down that first side and leave this other side uh, like to size and the gathers spaced, but not pinned down because I need to put a little clip into the point in order to pivot around. So I'm going to sew the first side down to the center point and then I'll leave my needle down. Try not to sew over these thicker pins. I try not to. Needle down. All right, now we're at the point. I'm going to leave that needle down, pick the presser foot up, and get in here and snip right there at the point. 
it's like clipping a corner while you're still on the machine. And then I'll flip this around and I can actually pin this in place while we're here before I put my presser foot back down and sew the other side of this. This is one way to sew nice crisp points. Practice first, maybe, if you've never done this before, but alas, I have. And just stitch that down like so. And now I can go ahead and press either the uh, seam allowance up like so, or down into the waist piece, depending on which part of this you were lining or facing or how you wanted to finish the interior seams of something like this. Of course, you could li uh, line something like this, fully line something like this, or you could use facings to finish it. You could do round seam binding, um, pink, use picking shears to cut it out and not worry about your seam allowance, whatever you like doing best. But I'll grab my side fronts here and I'll sew this princess seam, which is extra no trouble because again, there's not actually any like uh, fit shaping going on here. It's just a style line completely a style line, uh, something that is a seam that is added just for looks. Um, you know, when you're looking at this, you might think, oh, that princess seam is part of the fit, but not really because we have all this gathering going on at the bust. We don't need to use this princess seam as a fit seam. We can just use it for color blocking or changing from a solid to a pattern or just having a seam there basically. But I'll stitch that over the machine again, half inch seam allowance, trying to remove my pins as I go because this is curvy. It is kind of nice sometimes to have a little few clips in there so it'll just sit smoothly. I will have to, of course, clip this entire seam once I get over to the ironing board in a moment after sewing it anyhow. So doesn't vex me to have to put a couple of clips in. No big deal. Of course, I am working in a sort of heavier weight muslin. This dress is designed to be done with something floopier than this. So my muslin will be quite stiff um, on my body later when I'm modeling this for you. But in reality, you would want to make this out of like a rayon crepe or a wool crepe even various floopier silks, uh, even a round twill would be nice, um, but not perhaps stiff muslin, although you can make this out of a cotton if you would like. It just, something a looser weave or floopier would be nicer, I think, or at least would be what the 1940s pattern intends. And again, the skirt would be longer if you were doing this as a full length dress, but my skirt is only 10 inches long, but here we have the pocket for the bust. We have created the cone, even without our darts. But once both side fronts are sewn onto the center front bit, or the rest of the front, I suppose, we can go ahead and use that gathering stitching I put in earlier at the shoulders to gather those down to fit the back shoulder as well. Uh, I think this pattern image shows shearing, uh, like not just gathering, but shearing up here at the shoulder, um, which was often used in 1940s designs, but I've actually never done shearing before. So gathering will have to do for us. It's going to give a very similar look, of course, but um, I've never done sh shearing, shearing. Yeah, you know what I mean? But I'll just pin this in place, again, spacing out my gathers so that comes out nice and smooth and not, uh, you know, bulked up in one area, all the gathering in one side. It's nice to distribute your gathers evenly across that kind of thing. But again, you could pleat this or tuck this instead if you wanted to as well. But I'll just stitch with both of those over here on the trusty 99K. Some of you have been telling me that my, um, that you have the prettier faceplate on your front of your 99K. There's like a floral kind of filigreed faceplate for these. And I have the or Art Deco streamlined version for some reason. I might invest <laughs> in a vintage filigreed faceplate sometime for this machine. Give it a little bit of upgrade. I'll keep this one, of course, since it's probably original to this machine. Mine is from 1955, by the way. I am sewing the side seams, the fronts and the backs together here along the side seam at this point. Again, a slightly curvy seam, so you will want to put a couple of clips in that probably, unless it's a very subtle curve for you. And then again, you can finish this however you like. Uh, I'm just going to attach a facing up here at the neckline for my muslin today to show you what that would look like. And of course, the original dress has sleeves. I won't be setting any sleeves in this today just to save on muslin because this is just basically a demo to show you how this style is drafted in general. The main part of it, of course, it's just a three quarter sleeve that uh, you could make from your regular sleeve pattern and just shortening to three quarter or whatever style sleeve you wanted to add to this, you could. And here it is on my body. Again, this is a little bit stiff uh, for this design because this design, again, looks like it's done in something a little bit softer. But here it is on a person. Again, the neckline, I think I could have exaggerated those curves a little bit more on the neckline. But for a first mock-up for this design, a first try of this design, I don't think it's too bad. I hope you enjoyed my attempt of this style today. Of course, I think that it needs a little bit of refinement, but in general, this is my first 
kind of crack at this and I hope you enjoyed seeing how a pattern like this can come together. Do feel free to request styles like this from me anytime in the comments. Um, linking me to pictures on Pinterest is the best of all because then I don't have to go looking for something which does slow me down. So if you want me to, if you really want me to do something like this, it's best to make it as easy as possible for me because we all know I'm a bit of a lazy human. So if you link me directly to the Pinterest image or to the vintage pattern wiki or something like that, an image of what you're after, then I can usually see about recreating it and fitting it into my schedule. And thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. So I'll see you then. Bye.